Dear friends in Christ, on this fourth Sunday of Lent, the first reading is taken from the second book of Chronicles, chapter 36, verses 14 to 16 and 19 to 23. The second reading is from Paul's letter to Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 4 to 10. And the gospel passage is from John, chapter 3, 14 to 21. The third chapter of the fourth gospel begins with the dialogue between Jesus and Nicodemus. But after a while, the text becomes a monologue. Nicodemus goes to the background. The gospel passage today is part of this monologue, verses 14 to 21. In the talk with Nicodemus, Jesus insists that to enter the kingdom of God, one has to begin anew. But this new beginning is a work of God. that takes place as for the believer in baptism being born from above in water and spirit it's part of the creative power of god but then it's here made clear that in this new birth the role of the believer is not anything passive he has also an active role to play he has to exhibit his faith Both of these aspects are put well in a statement of 1 John chapter 5 verse 1. He says, "Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God." So there is this birth from God as well as the belief that Jesus is the Christ. At the same time, it is to be noted that faith is still something given to us as God's grace. The new birth from God and the faith in the Son of God lead one to the full sense of one's being, leads us to life that never ends. Without it, we will miss the meaning of our very selves or our existence. Have to avoid an unpleasant end to our life or a miserable death. These were questions raised by the Israelites when they were bitten by venomous serpents in the wilderness. Numbers chapter 21 verses 4 to 9. God then directed Moses to raise a bronze serpent on a pole so that all who were bitten would look to the bronze serpent and be healed and thus live. Jesus compares his raising on the cross to that of the symbol of the serpent raised on the pole. The crucified one has been raised by God as the bronze serpent as a symbol of salvation as a symbol of true life. We have to therefore fix our gaze on the crucified one. If our gaze gets away, we can be led astray. We have to orient ourselves towards the crucified one. We have to see him as the only source of salvation for all human kind. The union with him is the source of life for everyone. By believing in him and trusting in him, it's possible to be united with him by believing in the crucified one we are putting our trust in the immeasurable love of god too behind the crucified one it's god who acts it was in view of the salvation of men and women that god gave his son into the world so that he might die for the world in fact looked at from outside the cross of jesus was a sign of failure and weakness Jesus died as a totally helpless one. Jesus dies as the consequence of the evil and cruelty of men and women. It was as if God himself had abandoned him. But there is another face of it. Jesus was the most innocent man who ever lived on the face of this earth. But he was given the cruelest type of the punishment of that time. Crucifixion was the worst kind of punishment of the time. But Jesus loved this symbol of punishment in such a way that the symbol of punishment became the symbol of salvation. It is his love that transformed it into a symbol of salvation. In the desert, the sign of the very peril had become the sign of life. So also, as for Jesus, the symbol of punishment became the symbol of salvation love means interest 
participation solicitude concern etc love always decides the good of the neighbor there's no indifference there love rejoices in the joy of the other it was out of love that god created the world in theology it is said that god created everything out of nothing ex nihilo in latin but the second vatican council said that god created everything out of love ex amore out of love the god who created man out of love gave him all freedom even to choose against god himself man did choose against god himself then he was due to perish but god did not want his creature to perish so god planned to the economy of salvation through the law and the prophets god accompanied the human kind and finally god sent his son in a way god loved the world even above his son more than his son god did not withhold his only son but gave him up for us all so says st paul in romans 8:32 That's the story of God's incredible love. It's because God confers great dignity on human kind, on every human person. It's of this love that Paul speaks in the second reading today that we hear from the Ephesians. Now, chapter 2 verses 4 to 5. There he says, "But God who is rich in mercy, out of great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses made us alive together with Christ by grace you have been saved this is the story of god's love god's love expressed in the crucified one does not interfere with the free will of the human person god does not constrain anyone to accept his love god does not obtain our salvation or God does not give us salvation without our cooperation then there arises the question of faith without faith we cannot appropriate the salvation offered in the crucified one we need to open our hearts to it but the human heart is not always ready to do so it's about this that the gospel speaks today in its latter part it says in chapter 3 19 to 21 thus and this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil the human person likes to take sides with the evil for all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed but those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in god people choose easy ways ways which will help to run away from the light to be in the light is rather difficult and requires earnest efforts dear friends we are called to acknowledge the love of god and to look to the crucified one and put our trust in him jesus the crucified one is not just a thought not a theory not a hypothesis nor an imagination it's an authentic and real story equally real and authentic is god's love for us amen